Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to a special OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Taramina, blogger around the OAA, the host of Last Week Brain Cells, and the host of Between Terminas on Orient Neighbor Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on Neighbor Television. Today we got two very important guests here. We got the voice of Dragon Football, Coach Doug Corliss. Hey, Sammy. Yep. And then we got state champ sports writer and MI Prep Zone writer, Scott Bernstein. How you doing? I'm good. Thanks everybody, for having me. Everybody going good? Yep. Um, as I said yesterday here, um, we look at we're gonna preview the um twenty twenty four football season. Um so I know um CC you weren't at Media Day. Um Scott, were there any teams that impressed you or teams that concerned you um during Media Day? Um it I mean it impressed me. I, I think that uh West Moonfield brought their whole offensive line. <laughs> yeah. Some big boys. Uh, I'm a little surprised that um, Clarkston uh, finished third in the – Projected finished third. Projected third in the uh, preseason vote. And I, and this is nothing against Lake Orion. I think Lake Orion is going to be really good this year. Mm-hmm. But uh, I don't know. I think that I might give the edge to Clarkston. We'll see. I mean, they did lose their starting quarterback, though. Clarkson did? Yeah, Brady Collins no longer at Clarkson. Oh, about well, that? see, I don't know that. I didn't know that. Well, what, I, they didn't say that at the media day. Yeah, they trans, he transferred over to UAD Jesuit. I mean, I have it on my podcast. Oh, I missed that. Well, you just got scooped. Well, then I guess I, I will uh, I'll, I'll take that back. Lake Orion should be. Uh, I will send you the link to that Clarkson okay. podcast. How long ago did that happen? Uh, a couple weeks ago. Let me see. I missed it. Yeah, I mean, like, I will send you the link to that. Why did he do that? Can we that, talk about that for a second? What was the purpose? Of, why would Brady Collins leave? Clarkson to go to Jesuit. I don't know. That's 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 it's on my podcast. If you want to take a look at it, I mean, I'll send you the link to it. Well, so, I, I guess I'm, what I'm saying is, from a perspective of talking about the OAA, why would arguably the best quarterback in the class of 26 decide that he was better off in a lower level Catholic League division than the top OAA division? DC. Probably because number one, Jesuit just got a lot better. And yeah. also, you know, they got a lot. I mean, they got a lot better because of him. Yeah, hey, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You realize they lost their blue chip receiver, though. Yes, they did. So Elijah yeah. Dotson's at Belleville, yes. so it would make more sense to me if Brady Collins had gone over there to play with Elijah Dotson. Yeah, yeah I would. But... Except there, you're dealing with Bryce Underwood, who is Mr. No, 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 I'm not saying that Brady Collins should have gone to Belleville. I'm saying I understand if Elijah Dotson was still at Jesuit and. And Brady Collins wanted to transfer to throw him the football. Okay, I can understand that you got a guy that could potentially project to the NFL. You want to uh, play with him, but with Elijah Dotson not being there anymore, mm-hmm. what incentive is Brady Collins to go to? He's not going to Catholic Central. He's not no, going to St. No, Mary's. He's not no. going to Brother Rice. No. Okay, it, uh, Sal, I, it, I guess that's just a head scratcher to me. It is what it is, but it, it that was the that was the um. And in 40 years of high school football, I never thought we'd be talking about the transfer oh, it's, portal. It's yeah. Cool, man. Oh, it God, is, and it's been going on for, 10, going on for yeah. 10, 12 years yeah. now. Yeah. I mean, like, and I think that's going to be the most craziest thing. And I'll send you a link of that. Okay. You know I'm sorry. I, mean? I missed it. So I apologize. Yeah. I wasn't a, a properly. Uh, yeah. It's all right. You know what I mean? For this, uh, One thing I will say, <clears throat> excuse me, is for the most part, mm-hmm. Lake Orion has always played with the hand they're dealt. Yep. And I look at them because I'm closest to them. Yep. Yes, we've had some transfers from Pontiac. Mm-hmm. We've had some, but by and large, they yeah, play with the hand they're Lake dealt. Orient yeah. kids. I, I can't recall a ton of times where I've been talking about big-time transfers coming into Lake right. Orient football or well, basketball. Obviously, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how. It'll be interesting to see. We're going to talk Lake Orion in this podcast a lot. Um, as we go into the red, um, I guess it makes sense. I'm looking at the uh, media day uh, pamphlet, and Brady his name's not, not on there. I don't yep. know how that got passed. Yep, I have the podcast. I will send you that. Okay, thank you. Um, let's go. Let's talk about the divisions now. I mean, like, let's talk about the gold division. I mean, when you look at the coaches' poll, Avondale's favored, Ferndale second, Royal Oak is third, Pontiac is um fifth, Berkeley is fourth. Yeah, all, and, all due respect to. The Royal Oak, the Berkeley, and the Pontiac teams. I mean, this is a two-team race between yeah. Avondale and Ferndale. You, t- you could take those three teams, throw them in a bowl, 
reach out and pick one, and he could Scott could pick some, and whoever we picked would finish third, and then we could pick those three are duplicates of each other or triplicates of each other. When you look at between those three teams, I mean, let's talk about. You know, Pontiac first, obviously, last year this team won three games. They snapped the state's longest losing streak. That's a great three game, three wins for them is is a big, big time it is. Uh, strike. Yes. No question. And their schedule is more interesting. You, you, you look at that schedule, especially their non-conference, they open up with Frederick Douglass. Then they got Lincoln King later in the year. I mean, Pontiac, they could, if things go right, they could win four games this year. They could. Mm-hmm. And you know what? I've been saying it as long as we I've been doing this podcast with you. Good for them. Mm-hmm. Because they've you know the city of Pontiac turns out some tremendous athletes. Yeah, historically. It's yeah. it's yeah. been tough to watch what's happened to that school district in the exactly. last uh, decade, decade. Mm-hmm. And yeah. you look at that, I think I'll be honest with you, Wendell Jefferson's done a really nice job. Well, yeah, of course. Building yeah. that team. I mean, he's done an awesome job. Yep. You know, you look at the numbers they got. I mean, even when I talked to him on my podcast, Coach Jefferson, I mean, you could see the kids, the spirit. I mean, they're 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 great spirits right now over there, Pontiac. Uh, Connie, it, Connie Donaldson's a, is a heck of a player. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm actually kind of surprised. Honestly, it shows you what a great job Wendell Jefferson's doing yep. to, to keep him there. I wouldn't have been shocked if you know, he's a senior now, I think. Yes. So he's been playing since his freshman year. I wouldn't have been shocked if he made a move mm-hmm. uh, to get more exposure. But it's good that he's staying with him. And Pontiac's got so much starting to go right for them. Mm -hmm. Scott, you alluded to it. You've got a coach who's building a program. They've got really, really nice facilities. As much as I loved Wisner, and I loved Wisner, they've got facilities there that are on a par with anyone in the league. Mm -hmm. The Lions used to play their preseason games there. They They did. did. They used to, yes. I mean, before my time, but I've heard heard about it. It was during my time. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But I, and I, I really like the direction they're going. I really do. Yes. I think Pontiac's going to be a team. You know, they could be a surprise team at third. Now we got to talk Berkeley. I mean, a lot of turnover. A lot of turnover. New AD, in the coaching, new field, new coach. I mean, a lot of turnover. You know what? Get one out, nine last year. Get out the hammer and the nails and start to rebuild your program. And here's the get, thing. Get kids interested in playing football at Berkeley. They can win five games this year. Yeah. That's how, when you look at that schedule, they can win five games. I mean, you look at that schedule and you say to yourself, Wall Lake Central's beatable. I mean, Jackson Northwest, you know their nickname is the Mounties. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then that's, be, that's winnable. I mean, there's winnable games on that schedule when you look at Berkeley's schedule. You're right. Coach Humes has got a challenging job ahead of him. Yeah. He does. And for Berkeley, I know I've heard about this on the revenge. They use the hashtag on X now, revenge tour. They want to go on a revenge tour. I said, okay, you got to prove to me. Prove to me that you're willing to go on that tour. And then you prove to me they can win games. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that's, I mean, that was once a very proud program. Yeah, uh, it was. Under Fox and then McDougal. McDougal and, yes. Then it's just Sakura. And Sakura did a good job. Yep, so it's just then, been, uh, you know, it's been a couple of years. Where Coach Shields had two good two, two good yeah. years. Yes, he did. He did. They you know? were in the playoffs. Yeah, they were in the playoffs, yes. Yeah. You know, so I think Coach Shields will have his challenges uh, over there. And we'll see how that one goes. Is, it, is Nolan given in the NBA or NBA, in the NFL now? I think he, had a, he might have had like a quick. I got to look. I'll look. He's maybe in the CFL. I know that he's a guy that came out of Berkeley and, and yes, had yeah. some semblance of a pro opportunity. Yeah. And then we got to talk Royal Oak. Scott, I know you. I know you're from Royal Oak, obviously. Well, I'm. I'm. I spent a lot of time in Royal Oak. I'm actually. I grew up in uh, Bloomfield, Birmingham. I apologize. Nonetheless, I apologize. Um, well, Royal Oak. You want to talk about a? I, I don't know what. I don't know if. I don't. I don't want to sound um, negative. Apocalyptic here, but. It it's so it's been so difficult to dig themselves out of this. It's not even a hole of their own making. It was like uh, um, all of these kind of societal circumstances coalesced in that community mm-hmm. uh, in the years after Kimball and Don Darrow closed. And if people have a you know people with a 
more my age or coach's age, and you know they can remember that, especially Kimball was a powerhouse. Yes, uh, it was. Uh, like in all three sports. Yep. Uh, especially baseball and football, and then they had some good basketball teams, but football and baseball they were juggernauts. And then in the twenty five years or so since it went to the one high school, you don't have a lot of. Has Nuclear there, families yeah. that are in Royal Has it Oak. It's been that long now, twenty five years. It's Ish. been long, yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness! So I mean, tw- like twenty plus. Oh, and I remember two thousand six when they when they merged. I mean, they were so like 20, 20, so, 20, so like 20, almost so 20, 20, 20 years. Twenty yeah. years. Sorry, yeah. I said twenty five years, but they I mean, just have not been able to get. I mean, again, I don't want to be negative, but they just have not been able to get any footing in terms of growth in that football program. Yes. And I don't know what, and it's like. Different people, different faces, different classes. You had a Division One kid through there a year or two ago in Makai Jenkins, and I, I don't know. It it would di- it would be very if I was a alumni of Kimball football, I right. would look at this now and just be like, wow, what has my city yeah. football team? Yeah. And, and, and so much of it is the revolving door they've had. Yeah, stability as coaching stability as head coach, and it. We've seen this in other schools. It's not that the guy's doing a bad job. Right. It's not that. It's that the head coach, in many cases, and and it's not only set to Royal Oak, it's in other schools, can't get a job in the district. So they're, not, might, so they're not in the building. Yeah. He might teach somewhere else and come. Maybe. Or That's possible. Maybe you know, he's trying to land – employment with the school district and he said by the way i'm a football coach and they said great we'd love to have you as our you know as our head varsity coach but we can't offer but you their current job. coach colin campbell is in the building he is a there teacher in the building so that when you look it. at when you look at royal oak on the field this year you look at that schedule and you say don't be surprised week one and I'm calling this on air. Don't be surprised if, because they open up with Detroit Lincoln King Academy week one. And Lincoln King Academy knocked off Memphis and knocked off Hand Tramick the final two games by blowout fashion. That could be a trap game for Royal Oak. That could seriously be a trap game for them. It's certainly going to set the trend for the rest of the season. I mean, they went to overtime with Pontiac last year. Yep. Yep. So I think Royal Oak, they're, gonna, they're a team I'm keeping an eye on very carefully this year. I'm, I'm, uh, just a segue. I'm high on Ferndale. Yeah, we're yeah. bringing them up next. Yeah, yeah, we're bringing them up next. Here is with speak, speaking of the Eagles. It's about time. It's about time. I mean, twenty three. You got a lot of seniors. You got a lot of senior experience on the team. They just changed coordinators. Mike Legro no longer there. He's at Bay City John Glenn. Um, for Coach Eric Royal, you got experience. Chance for you to be in D two. You know what I mean to do some damage in D two. Schedule's tough. But it's now or never for Ferndale. I'm going to start with CCN this one. Um, I won't maybe go so far as say it's now or never. But, again, you take that step. Mm-hmm. You know, and they're, they've gone up a step. Mm-hmm. They're almost to the top of the stairs. And, it again, it's can you get the athletes, can you keep the athletes, and can you keep them involved in the program? Do kids want to come and play football at Fer- at Ferndale? I think there's a lot of excitement right now around yeah. this group. Yeah, and there is a co-op program right. though at Ferndale Ferndale U too. Yeah. And la- last year I went out and saw them, um, and I, g- I got to know some of those guys and got to know Coach Royal a little bit better than I had in the past. And uh, I saw the seeds that they were they were planting last year. I think you know Coach Royal said that they were they were uh, they felt like they underachieved last year. They did. And um, you know it all starts with. The quarterback, Colin Hawk, and Colin yeah. Hawk to me is a very underrated field general in the OAA. Uh, he's got a lot of for a for somebody that hasn't, and I I, I mean this in a compliment in, in a complimentary way, for somebody that hasn't achieved a lot, he's only played one year of varsity football, so mm-hmm. you know that he carries himself with a lot of confidence. And and it's not. I don't think it's misplaced confidence. I'm not saying it's cockiness. He carries himself with a presence. Like I know that this is the year we're going to get it done, and I'm going to be in the driver's seat, and I'm going to make sure all of the bases are covered. Mm-hmm. Um, 
you know, he, he was at, I believe he was at Bloomfield Hills. From Bloomfield Hills and Brother Rice and never mm-hmm. actually got on the field. So last year was really his first uh, time as a, uh, not just, you know, as a starter at varsity, but I, I, this was his first real, real trial by fire. Mm-hmm. And uh, I saw him in the off season. And I think he's going to um, be a catalyst. When you look at that team, you look at Ferndale. I mean, their schedule, they open up with Lampier. Of course, Roy Osorowski's there. Um, then, you know, that schedule is not going to be easy for them um, when I look at Ferndale. Especially they got to play Southfield at the end. Yep. Yeah, they got to play Southfield. Yeah, so Southfield's another enigma we're going to talk about in a little bit. So, but when I look at the team, I think who's favoring this division, I think the coach has got it right here. Yeah. It's Avondale. Yeah. Bob Meyer has, in his first year, taken over that program. Yep. Changed that whole offense. Right? Love Bob. Love Bob. I love that guy, too. But he changed the whole offense. He went from like a spread look to a wing T. I'm going like, dude, I'm going like, this team didn't need a change in offensive mindset. Not, not that much. Not that much. <laughs> they won the gold, though. They I don't won know the gold. Did. They're, uh, they got to replace the quarterback. Uh, yeah, that's uh, obvious. Um, Herzog's gone. Yep. Not sure who's stepping I think in. they're down. I think they said two guys when I talked yeah. to Coach Meyer. But Sykes, I mean. Justin, yeah, Justin Greer Sykes oh my is a God, is a mad. real diamond in the rough in yeah. terms of Cooper uh, Volfrey is another one. Yeah, he's the one that I I target. Yeah, Cooper Volfrey. Yeah, he's one. When I talked to Coach Meyer on the podcast, he said his defense is going to yeah, be Arrington and uh, Thomas. Yeah, the linebacker spot. Yeah. yeah, his defense is going to be the ones that are very good. The defense, and I think that's going to be the thing. Avondale is going to be a team that relies on defense to win them games. And you look at that schedule to open up. I mean, they got Cedar Springs on there. We know Cedar Springs likes to run the ball a lot. Yeah. That's going to be an interesting game. Then they got McComb Luthor North on there, which you know Coach Meyer knows him when he was at Laboni Clarenceville. And then you got Stony Creek on there, you know, which that should be a real fun game. I mean, that's a, that, could yeah. be, that could be a fun game. And then I get I got to find out who they close out the year with. So, but I think – I mean, I think with Avondale, um, I think that um, I got to hear Carlton Airport. Carlton Airport was the team that made the regional final last year. It was yep. knocked out by Harper Woods yep. in D4. So, I think Avondale, if they can get by Wall Lake Western, if they can get by Mason. Good luck with that. Yeah. I think they got a chance to do something special over there. You see them as a playoff team? Avondale? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Don't be surprised they give Wall Lake Western problems this year. I, I see them as a playoff team. I mean, yeah. mm-hmm. I do too. A lot of th- I I think a lot of things are going to have to go right, mm-hmm. and especially like you said at the back end of the year, coming into week seven, eight, nine. Yeah, that that's where you're going to find out if you're going to be there or not. Yeah, and that'll be something to watch for. But I got to have enough favor in the gold. Um, I think the coach got it right. You guys think so? Yeah, I do. Yeah, no question. And then let's talk about the biggest mess in football, which is the blue. I mean, seven teams in this division. Shouldn't be that way. No. That should be. Seven teams in this division. I'm going like, what are you doing? What are you doing? You got to take one of those teams, and I hope they do realign. At least one of those teams. You should take one of them, put them in the white, and one put them yeah. in the white, gold. and yes. one in the gold. Yeah. Makes sense. Exactly. It makes sense. So let's look at each of these teams. I mean, let's look at. Each of these teams. So we're going to start. We're going to go from like, um, let's go from, let's talk Bloomfield Hills first. I okay. mean, I just, when I look at Bloomfield Hills, Coach Laurie wasn't at media day. You don't know what you're getting from them. You this, you're going like, last year this team went one, one and eight. Yeah. Went one and eight. You don't know what they're getting from you. But, it, you know, in fairness to Coach Laurie, who, who really is one of the great, sideline tacticians in this area, what he's done in, you know, he, he was coaching when I was playing in uh, mm-hmm. high school with Lhasa and he's taken some teams on some pretty cool playoff runs. You know, he sure. took Lhasa yep. to the final four, uh, took Bloomfield Hills on a couple, uh, um, you know, journeys in the playoffs that I don't know people expected. John Paddock, who was his quarterback. Yep, I know. Ago, I think he's in the NFL now, or at least trying to, trying to make him. I think he's still in college. I think, isn't he? Or I'm pretty he? sure I saw him in a camp somewhere. I could be wrong. I, I could have seen him at camp at uh, in college, but ah. nonetheless, he's put out some players, but in a similar fashion, not the not the exact same situation, but in a similar fashion, 
Bloomfield Hills, like Royal Oak a little bit, doesn't always have the student body and the some of the built-in tools in terms of personnel that other programs have because of kind of societal mm-hmm. issues, the way that the town is kind of situated. Mm-hmm. Yep. DC, you think? Well, and, and you know, I, I've said it before with the Troy schools. Yeah, it's the in, same thing. In Bloomfield Hills. Yeah. And, and Gary Griffith told me years ago, he said that the demographics of the Troy districts yeah. had changed yep. and the demographics of the Bloomfield area has changed. They're not getting football people, I well, guess. And, and that, no, I, I think I think that's true, but I think there's a little bit. Um, this is my own kind of plain amateur sociologist here, but I think there's a there's a there's a root cause in some of these communities like Royal Oak, Troy, mm-hmm. Bloomfield Hills, Berkeley, maybe to a degree, where you have a certain type of parent. And that parent doesn't want to encourage their kids to play football as opposed to Lake Orion and Clarkston and Oxford. Right. Where it's like the first thing that they want to teach them. So for, you know, for whatever reason, I think I'm not trying to dismiss um, safety concerns because obviously when you, when you have a child, that's the thing that you're most worried about Mm -hmm. and concerned about. But I think that there's been a little bit of a, scare or, or an idea that if I let my son play high school football, there's an opportunity that later down in life, he's going to have issues. And I, I've always said to parents, like, I think that worry should come in. If you have a, a son who's projected to play in college, the pros, mm-hmm. and then you can start thinking about what does that mean for his you know, lifespan. Yeah. But when you're talking about kids at 15, 16, 17, barring, you know, tragedy i don't see little johnny playing football for seaholm as the you know ha- with the potential that he could have uh you know brain injuries going forward but the fact of the matter is there's a lot of parents that think that i i get it the game has gotten so it's much gotten changed. safer yes and i go back to my days i mean mm-hmm. it was archaic yeah i remember when i now. played too i mean like and helmets are better now. yeah my my play by play partner Chris Fritching. He is, if there's anyone who is leading the cause for player safety, it's him because he's working with kids with through the Detroit Lions and the NFL Play Football Initiative, and they're teaching the right way. And that all goes, the teaching of football has changed so much in the past 10, 15 and years. And I know it's impacted a team like Bloomfield Hills, and we know yeah. – um, let's go from Bloopy Hills. Let's talk to Troy. I mean, Knox, let's go with Troy Athens first. Um, they both, cha- both Troy. Sorry to interrupt you. Go ahead. Yeah. Troy Athens changed offenses. You know, last year they went to more of a wing team misdirection offense. I mean, like, you know, I'm going like, what do you, I'm going like, you don't need to change your offensive philosophy at Athens. You've got players over there. Yeah. Make up your mind what you want to do. Mm hmm. Do you want to spread it? Do you want to run it? What you know? What's your primary focus? Decide on it and stay with it. Mm-hmm. They kind of went backwards a little last year after they had a good. 20, yeah, they did. Yeah. Twenty-two. Yeah, they did. I mean, like, and I'm looking at it. You know, they've and this is this is school that's also had a lot of turnover when it comes to coaching. I mean, Billy Keenis was there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. Then you had, and then of course you had um Tom Cook. I mean, t- who took over um a couple years ago went to a um. Changing the offense around, changing the philosophy around. It went, I from, mean, Hap, it went from Hapner, Hapner to right. Keenest. The Keenest, yeah, you're right. Yeah. And I just think that they haven't made the playoffs, and I'm not counting the 2020 year. Right. But they haven't made the playoffs since 2011. Yeah, yeah. I remember that team. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that was the team that lost to Romeo in the first round. Yep. And for Athens, quarterback is a question mark. But when your philosophy, you're right about one thing. You're right about TC a lot. They have got to make up their mind offensively what they want yep. to do. Because if, imagine yourself, you're in third down and 15 in a game, you know, and you're running a wing T misdirection offense. You're going to have to throw the ball. I know they got to start playing it. They pick it. 
but you got to run the ball. You got you, to you got to throw the ball. Yeah. I mean, like you, you just can't just run the ball on third down. You know what I mean? Yep. It's not it's not manageable. Yep. And then Troy. I mean, obviously, when you look at Troy, there is a lot of. I know there's a lot of excitement over there, at Troy. Yeah, I'm, considering I'm, I'm high on them this year. I am not. Um, <laughs> because their schedule. I mean, their their schedule is brutal. Yeah, their schedule this year is brutal. I mean, last year, they lost in the final play to Frazier. Last play of the game. That took them out of the playoffs. Uh, I hate to put it this way, but Troy has no business playing Lake Orion this year. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. And that's week three. And how that how the schedule maker made that happen, I still don't know. I mean, they're, I'm not saying their schedule isn't tough, but. They got to play Notre Dame and Lake Ori in week three and week four. Okay. Th- that's going to tell me where Troy's at. Okay. Mm-hmm. Last season, I talked to you last year about Troy's schedule, and it was not as tough as I thought it would. And when I look at that schedule from last year and look at their schedule this year, it is toughened up. I mean, like, it is toughened up. I will know a lot more about Troy week three. You call in the game on ON TV when Troy comes to Dragon Country. And that- I don't mean to totally demean them to say they have no business playing Lake Orion because any football coach or any team will say, you know what, that's who we're supposed to play. We'll play them. Bring them on. Mm-hmm. But it's going to be a very tough go for Troy. going With the schedule they have, I look at – Four wins will be a lot for them this year. That's just what I. Yeah. I think they can get five. They can get five or six. I mean, like, but I got them at five. Got, I mean, well, like, first of all, they got they got three D two kids now. They've had yeah. three commit- Peacock, yeah, Jalen Peacock, 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 Noah Ori, and Lucas Tech. Right, and Ur- Ori was a backup last year. I, no, I thought Ori was started last. Was year. He starting last he year. He started last year. Okay, well, I was wrong. Ori started. Well, I uh, I was wrong about that, and I, I think I wrote in the paper that he was a backup. So I apologize, Noah. Um, but he's going to Grand Valley. Yep. Uh, Lucas Tech's going to Va- a Grand Valley. Grand Valley, yep. And Jalen Peacock, who might have some of the best upside in terms of a college uh, prospect in, in the OAA, is going to Saginaw Valley. I got concerns about the running game. I really do. I seriously got concerns about the running game and their depths. Um, when I look at Troy, um, they're, they're, they got – I got worry signs with them. I mean, like, you know, what happens if – if I get it can be one-dimensional, but – they don't have a running game I can trust right now. I just don't. How did how did Ori look last year? I don't know. I missed it. Was it. Okay. I didn't, Sorry. He was all right. He was all right. You surprised he got a, a Grand Valley offer? No, I wasn't surprised. You know what I well, mean? Well, you're saying he's but well, that doesn't make sense. If you're saying he's just okay. I thought I mean to play it well, all, all due respect, need to, to play at Grand Valley as a quarterback. You've got to be better than I need okay. to see the schedule. I need to I need to see him play before like some like the Lake Orions of the world. I need to see like you well, know, I was just surprised that I saw you know, that. I that need to see him play. I need to see him play like the Lake Orions of the world or like the West Bluefields or the Clarkstons, Oxfords. I mean like or the Adams, the Stony Creeks, the Rochester before I give you that answer. But again, yes, he got a Grand Valley offer. Yes, he did. Will, will he be a quarterback? That's the big question mark. That he, is the big question mark. He may be a defensive yeah, back at Grand mm-hmm. Valley. Yeah. He may, yes. Yeah. I agree with you there. Um, let's look at Seaholm, um, the team that runs the option. Last year, a lot of success, a, lot, a great year for them. Great year for Jimmy DeWald is such an excellent coach, yes. such an excellent motivator, mentor to young men, you know, teacher of the game of life and the game of football. I mean, if I had to craft a coach that I would want to coach my son, DeWald would be at the top of the list. And he's one of the and when he when you get him on a podcast, you know when he call when he calls in, he's always honest. Yep. He's always honest. He always, I mean, if he ever wants to rant on on this podcast, I let him. You know what I mean? So, but Seaholm, they lost a lot last year. When he lose Kenny's, he lose Robbins, he lose. I mean, they had a good senior class last year. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Great senior class. And this is the same team knocked off Groves twice last year. Yep. And so both and both of them were kind of upset. I didn't think they were. Upset. Well, I called them, and not to sound, you know, I, I said they were, but I think at the time they were perceived. As <laughs> I didn't think they were upset. Do you see you what you at the time? I think the well, at least the first one was an upset. Yeah. So, you know what you're going to get with Seaholm. 
the and beer. You know what you're going to get with Coach DeWalt. Just in yeah. the sense that they that Groves had more, you know, flashier talent. Yes, flashier. Yep. But you're, you know what you're going to get with Seal. Right. They're they're going to come at you every week. They've and again they've had their hills. They've had their valleys. Lately they've been hills. They had mm-hmm. a, a after they made the state semifinal appearance, they had a valley the next year. Now they're back in hills again. Yep. And we've said it before. I'll say it again. Winning breeds players. Yes. You win, players are going to be beating yep. on your door. To and, the and the Let's facilities they have. Let's not forget the facilities. Yeah. I I mean, like, I haven't been in their, in their, their new indoor facility yet. I got to go in there. I really do. And I told that to D-Wall, you know. All right, let's go to Oak Park. I mean, Oak Park, to me, I've got excitement when I look at this team. Yes, they had a down year last year. Their running game. Honestly, you don't? No, no. I'm going to say, honestly, you said they had a down year last year. I was going to say, I honestly, did. I, yes, they have. They, have, they played majority of them have freshmen and sophomores on that team last year. You know, I'm agreeing with you. I'm saying that they've <laughs> I don't really understand the trajectory of that program right now, but finish. But Oak Park, you know what I mean? They could be a player again. CC, what do you think? Coach Carter. Yeah. I am a great Greg Carter fan. From the time he was at the Porus, he won with Inkster. And we, we talk about this every year. He won at the Porus, won at Inkster, came to Oak Park, had some success early. And then they had a drop off, and they've had. Have they had success early? Yeah, they did. Yeah, they, they did. did. And they, they did. They yeah. did, did early. They? Yeah. Early on. Early. Well, did, early. Did, they, did they? Well, they had. They had that one year. They had a tough year, but they had some really close losses. Then they had that up year. They had. Some, I, I, I respectfully disagree. Yeah. They had. Some <laughs> if losses. you're not making, if you're not making runs in the in the tournament, if well, you're not making runs in the playoffs, no it don't question. matter. No question. No question. So what I'm saying is, in uh, 14 years, they've been to one Final Four, and I believe that Final Four was on a. Uh, a season where, I they, didn't, the where, they, didn't, where they didn't win the a game. Six, I remember that. So I don't. I love Greg Carter. I really do. And and he's one of he's in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. But I question where that program is right now. DC. The last couple of years, they they start out and then something happens. Yeah. Something off the field. Maybe you know everybody deals with injuries, but he gets an injury. They have an off the field issue, and that happened like three out of the last four years. They've had some kind of off the field issue, and I talked with Coach Carter about it, and I said it can't help but affect your team. And he says, "You know, of course it does." He says, "And as much as you try to get them back on track, you know, these are still sixteen, seventeen year old." kids mm-hmm. and it stays in the back of their mind is i would like to see oak park have one crisis free season and their schedule looks manageable you know what yeah. i mean when you look at it i mean there's not a tough there's not like it looks manageable someone turned off the faucet there though when it came to the blue chippers yeah i mean yes. you had a yes. decade yeah. run there of every year they got four or five kids that are division one level recruits and over the last three or four years i don't think they've put anyone into the division no, no. and and that all goes back to the winning breeds players yeah. because some of these guys that would be blue chippers are going somewhere else but then you got to look at the team's middle school program you got to look yeah, at the feeder right. program you yep. got to look at that something's not something's missing and then there's kids that would have been going to oak park that are going to southfield Yes. That are going to Ferndale, that are going to Orchard Lake St. Mary's, and yeah, it's it, you. I, I guess the point I'm making, and I don't, I don't want to turn this into a, you know, yeah, I'm trying to drag down Coach Carter because I love Coach Carter. I'm just, I'm speaking reality, and the reality is, you didn't think when Coach Carter got to Oak Park that a decade plus into that tenure, he was going to have trouble keeping those kids right yeah but he I has agree. and they haven't been the same since that right. loss to de la salle yeah. they really haven't been the same since that game and i, I don't mean, think like, it's in, in in terms of what he has he, it it's not like coach carter's not doing a good job coaching i mean no. we know coach carter's a hall it's of just the, coach. it's just the play it's yeah. just the players you yeah. know what i mean that's really what it is so oak park's got some questions at quarterback 
running game supposed to be good this year. Um, the, the concerns are up front, um, so we'll see what happens with them this year. Um, let's go to the Farmington schools. We're going to start with um, with North. I mean, like, obviously, North, you look at they lost the quarterback last year, Ryan Shelby. Um, who, frankly, <laughs> never really lived up to what we thought he was going to be as a, as a quarterback mm-hmm. in high school. And then you look at North Farmington, you look at that team, and you say to yourself, they could be back this year to where they've yeah. been, you know, under, under the um, – under the um, coach John Harrington years when he was at Harrison. They can't continue to tread water, and that's what they've done the last two or three years. The they, they, good, high things are expected of them, and they tread water. Injuries have killed them. Injuries. But, have- again, they have this, the same kind of issues that we were talking about with some of these other suburban schools where, for whatever reason, mommy and daddy don't want junior playing football, so you have numbers issues. That you did, and it's interesting within that school district, the issues that he's having at North Farmington weren't the same issues he was having at Harrison, and all those Harrison kids that would have, in theory, been at Harrison now are at Farmington. Southfield yeah. or yeah. right, yeah, yeah, at North Far- or at at Harrison. Did right. you ever see their plaque outside? State champions, state yeah. champions, state Thirteen champions, state yeah. champions, and. Everybody expected all that to carry over to North Farmington. Yeah, back in 2019. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. And it they, hasn't and, happened. And they had the they had a couple good years, and mm-hmm. they had yeah. a, in the COVID year. I think they they took a hit during the COVID year, but then when I COVID, oh, I thought the COVID year didn't they one of the years they made a run. Yeah, they went to yeah. Traverse City. I remember yeah. that. And then um, and then I remember talking to Coach John Herstein, and he said that the program is starting to get back on the way up, which is a good sign for them. We got Brendan Rice in the trenches. Yeah, Brendan Rice in the yeah. trenches. I'm curious to see how Terrence James does a quarterback this year. That is a he's an athlete. He's an athlete, yes, yeah. but I think he's more of a DB, you know, than a quarterback. No offense, you know what I mean. Yeah. But Duke Blanchett running back, I think, you know, and North Farmington opened up the year with, with Laboni Stevenson, and I think that's I think that's a winnable game for them. I mean. So we'll see I, what happens. I expect them to be competitive this year. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know, maybe make the playoffs. I think that might be a stretch with the division they're in. But yeah. They're yeah. They, they could make it. And then the team that I've got favored right now is Farmington. I mean, you look at Farmington, the schedule looks favorable until week eight. Um, and then you look at who they got coming back. They got a quarterback in Julian Johnson. Coach Jason Albright's done a really nice job. They were in the white last yep. year. They took they took their lumps. Now they're in the division they're, they're supposed to be in. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jason's done a good job uh, taking over from Corey. And, you know, that, that's a, you know, a program that has had a couple ups and downs. But I think that for the hands that they've been dealt, Corey and Jason have done a really good job there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. DC? Yeah. Farmington is, for the last couple of years, they've been an enigma. They haven't played up to the level of athlete they have. I think this might be their year. Mm-hmm. And but remember, again, again, look at the division there. In. Yep, it's that blue division. It's is, a pick 'em. It's going to be a dog fight. It's a pick all em. the way through. You know, you can pick any team in this division here, and and there's a case for them winning it, and there's also a case for them not winning it. So you know, so that division could be just it could be a street fight. So we'll see what happens. Let's go now from the blue to the white, and let's talk about there's two state champions in this division. Yeah. We're going to start with one of them. Did we see this coming last year? Did we see Harper Woods making a run to the state champion? I did. Oh. I did. I did. I called it. I did. Okay. Okay. I did. <laughs> All right. I did. Okay. I'll, I'll great, tell you great what. Great job by Coach Roden. I called the, the Harper Woods Goodrich semifinal. That was a fun yeah. one. It was a fun one, and after the run Goodrich had made the year before, we all expected, you know, the, those of us talking amongst ourselves in the press box thought Goodrich is going to go back, and Harper Woods played the game of their lives. Do you and, want me to tell you guys something with Harper Woods? You guys think I may be crazy. Well, we thought that for a long time. <laughs> but anyhow, I appreciate it, yeah. but... I think this year's Harper Woods team might be better than the team from last year. Oh, no. Here's I, why. No question. Here's why. You got a quarterback. I was going to say this. You yeah. got a quarterback in um Rochelle. in Ryan Rochelle. You got Dakota Garrett, who I think is going to be a star. 
I mean, he Kobe are, Bay- he already is. He already, he already is. A star. Yeah. Well, I, he could be the best receiver in the state right now as a yes. sophomore. And let's not forget Dakota Garrett, if you did not know that, it's Coach Odin's um, nephew. Yes, I didn't know that. I and didn't know. Kobe Bailey, running back, you know what I mean? Their yep. offensive line is very good. Then your defense, your front seven is probably one of the most scariest in the league. We- Weatherspoon, year. they just that, that family puts out good linemen. Yeah, <laughs> that play yeah. for Coach Odin, whether at East English or at mm-hmm. at Harper Woods. I think this is the third uh, the third Weatherspoon that's in the trenches. Mm-hmm. And uh, Vory Peacock is another guy. Yep. that's on the edge edge rusher edge rusher. Watch out for DeAndre Bid. Watch out for oh, yeah. him. He's I, gonna yeah. be. He's gonna be. He'll be something. And, and you look at that schedule, though. You know, you look at the schedule. I mean, it's challenging. I mean, yeah, they got to play. Um, they got Redford Union to close, start off the year. Then they got to go to Oxford. I think that's going to be a tough game. Um, and then week three at Novi Detroit Catholic Central. Tough three game stretch for Coach O. You know, I I yeah. think uh, piggybacking off of what you said to start the discussion about Harper Woods. And they won a state championship running two quarterbacks. Right. Yeah, Buford. Yeah. Who Step on Buford. Se- who's a, and, um, a senior who was more of a game manager type, uh, but could could make plays. I mean, mm-hmm. it's like a guy that uh, was great at at uh, running an offense, wasn't going to wow you, but could make plays. Rochelow, as a sophomore last year, got started to get spot duty. I think Buford got hurt for a, a couple games. He comes in, he has a 500-yard passing game, yep. which I is, like, remember- insane. I remember what he did against Clarkston. My and goodness. So what my point is, I think you're right that now that you're going to kind of just turn the whole offense over to him. He's a junior. He had the experience as a sophomore with spot duty. And he is a gunslinger. Yeah. yeah. And you put, uh, you know, with Bailey at the uh, Bailey and Adams at running back and, and Grant and Bidden, you know, you have a potential for a, a, an explosive explosive offensive sets. And it wouldn't surprise anyone if they repeat a state champ. It nope. wouldn't surprise anyone. Nope, I agree. And I'll tell you what, I bring my popcorn to Harper Woods Groves. Yeah. Yeah. Bring That's in Beverly Hills this yeah. year. Yeah. That should be fun. Um, speaking of Groves, let's talk about them. I mean, obviously, you look at this team. Um, Best player in the county. Yep. Avery Guy, you saying? Oh, I mean, in terms of... Uh, you know, recruiting ranking here. The recruiting rankings, you know, sometimes to me, like, you know what I mean? You're right. I, I look at recruiting rankings, you know what I mean? Some, I don't buy into I don't disagree stuff, with you. I'm just saying he's considered a four-star blue yeah, chip. He had four-star offers from everywhere. He's going to Michigan, yeah. and he's a beast. Uh, in the when you look at Groves, though, this year, and I think I think with them, it's going to come down to is can, um, you know, can this team defensively, you know what I mean, repeat what they've done in the past. I mean, they got a lot of experience coming back on defense. They got to replace the quarterback. I know Coach Flurry's high on Ryan Coates. They do have a backup Count quarterback. Ryan Counts. Ryan Counts, I bet. I apologize. Um, but um, obviously, what I talked about before you got here, Scott, with them, Coach CC, about the running game. They, obviously, they have such a dynamic Mario, one-two punch. Mario Lachado and Noah and Sanders. Noah, Noah Sanders. Sanders. And, and and everybody obviously last year started talking about Noah Sanders. His dad's Barry Sanders. Yeah. Um, and he's going to be really good. I mean, he's already mm-hmm. really good. But Campo LaVisco, uh, yeah. uh, to he's me, good. is so underlooked. Under the, you know, mm-hmm. he, he is, he is, uh, you know. He's bl- Rocky Blyer to Frank O'Hara. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he, he's tough, but he's also super fast and he can. And he, he can slide uh, through those holes uh, seamlessly. And he, I just really like that one-two punch. And then you look at, of course, you got, they got a very good DB crew over there. Chris, um, Chris, Chris Little's, Chris Little's very good. Locked, he's locked down. He, he just committed to Grand Valley. Yep. And then you look at, I mean, the player I'm curious to see, watch out for it, Rose, No Woods. I think he could have monster year. For them. No I Woods think. is a tight end. and uh, Yep, tight end. I like Carter, um, Carter Hladaki, who's. Mom, I don't know if she still is. She was the uh, basketball, well, girls' basketball coach at Seaholm. Um, no, January is no longer there. Chris Manchester's coach. Okay, well, I remember January, and and uh, Carter really impressed me last year as a sophomore, mm-hmm. and now he's going to step into more of a kind of a, a leadership role. I think he'll be calling uh, calling plays uh, from the middle linebacker spot. That'd be good. I mean, but when you look at that schedule that girls have, they open up with UAD Jesuit. Um, then they got to play West Bloomfield. 
You know, not easy. No, no it's not easy. Don't be surprised if you start 0-2. Yeah. I mean, I'm not surprised. And then, you go look at, and then obviously you got that Harper Woods game in Beverly Hills. Um, so we'll see what happens there. Um, let's look at Rochester. I mean, Rochester's a team that, you know, Coach Eric Vernon last year, they had a 3-6 and six year. It, I think their season kind of tailspin when they lost by one point to Utica last year. It's yep. art. Um, so what's your outlook on Rochester? I'm going to start with CC first. I keep waiting. I mean, Eric Vernon's been there a long time. Um, the, he's got a great athlete pool to draw from. I keep waiting. It's consistency. He's got to, he's got to get, he's got to get someone in there that can come in and stay there and play the game and get everyone else to believe in him. So there was, there was a, you know, I don't, I, I never like to, I'm, I'm all about com- accountability, but I will say if you're Rochester, some of the timing of your all time great quarterback happened to align with the Pico brothers. Yeah. Right. Uh, uh, Plano, yeah, yeah, I remember and, that. And, uh, and, and waters last year. Yeah. Uh, and Ryan waters. Yep. So it's like, you just happen, you know, in any other era, I would think that maybe that Rochester team of the last three or four years, I know that, Pico knocked him out when he was a sophomore in an upset during the COVID year. Yep. Uh, they were, I think they were both undefeated the next year when they played or the year I after. I think I got to look. I'm just saying that like Rochester had some really talented crews that happened to have across town from oh, them. Yep. Teams that were like the best teams that Adams had had in 20 years. And Stony yeah. Creek, yeah, another right, one. And Stony Creek. Right. Had, yep. Right, I remember right. that. Now remember Rochester hasn't beaten Adams since 1996. Right. When I was, yeah. When I was. <laughs> yep, CC. Yep. You know that. I mean, but Rochester, you know, Jack Lauer running back. I mean, like, that's really where I think it starts and ends with. And you look at um, you know, their quarterback situation. I know they got Curtis O'Hare quarterback. I mean, like, is he the answer there? We don't know. Oh. So we'll see what happens there. Speaking of that, let's go across town from Rochester to Stony Creek. New coach and Rick Powell taking over over there. Yeah. Um, you got some linemen there. Spencer Beekman's one of the guys I'm high on. Peyton Rumble's another one. And, of course, Sam Fogler, the running love, back. Love Sammy Fogler. Yes. yes. I mean, so when you look at Coach Powell, Coach CC, you know from experience when he was the D.C. at Lake Orion. Yep. So what, what's your thought process on Ricky taking over Stoney? <sighs> there will be no lack of enthusiasm. Mm-hmm. Rick Powell is an enthusiastic coach. He demands the best. And I think he'll get it there. It won't be an easy start, okay? It's going to take time to gel over there. And this time of year where they're going through summer camp and two-a-days and start going through scrimmages is crucial to Stony Creek because they've got to get that belief in themselves under the new program. Personally, I hated to see Rick leave Lake Orion. I hated it. It's a great get for Stony Creek. Though. Yeah, it is a great hire for Stony Creek. And Merlo's did a great job. They're over at St. Mary's now running the defense. Anthony Merlo's at Lapeer coaching over there now. Okay, but uh, mm-hmm. Nick, right? Yeah, Nick Merlo's yeah. at is St. running Mary's. the running the running the defense, defense. running the defense there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, not the offense. I'll take a look. I think the uh, offense. You think he's running the offense? I think it's the offense. Okay. Um, regardless, he's moved to the Catholic League. Yep. Um, did a really good job with that uh, with that program. Uh, took him, you know, to some you know, level of success that I don't know a lot of people anticipated. And I think you could not have scripted it any better to get someone like Rick Powell to come in there yeah. and bridge the gap because you're coming from a program that is a top flight program with a guy that understands X and O's. He understands motivation. He understands how to connect with kids. And like you said, when you have, when, when you're, when, when your starting point is a really good line and a good lineman, like, you know, Beekman can anchor that line. That's a, that's a really nice way to, to, to come out of the gate. Yeah. 
They still got to find a quarterback, and they still got to find um, some defensive secondary. I mean, wide receivers, watch Mark. But Fogler can be a game breaker. Fogler's I mean, he was, a game breaker. He was a game yes. breaker as a sophomore. Mm-hmm. Who's going to run their offense? Um, that I don't know who's going to run it. You don't. You don't know if they're if Rick's bringing his dad in. I've been hearing. I think his dad's on staff. I'm tired of the look. I mean, like I think his dad's on staff. So. If he is, then I think he'll run it. Then I think you're going to see as he a lot called, of which direction, as he wing called it in Lake Orion, wings wing and things. Tea, yes, he called it wings so. and things. We'll wings see. And things. Yes, yeah. we'll see. And then let's talk about Ante. How the, he brought he brought his dad. He how, did bring his. How the mighty have fallen with their prognostications. I don't buy it. New coach, new system. Yeah. I mean, wait, I'm wait, looking at red wait, flags everywhere. With Ante. What do mean just bit, well. I mean, there's red flags but, everywhere. Okay, but let's state state facts here, and the facts are they are coming off a state championship. Their coach left. A lot of people graduated. A lot of other people left. So, you know, I'm, I don't, I don't think the clock starts ticking with Keith McKenzie, who's come in there as the head coach, and you know, we'll see what he's able to do. I mean, we know that he's got the pedigree. He won a Super Bowl, yeah. played yes. in the NFL. Schedule's brutal, though. No, no. I Well, yeah. Look, yeah. yeah schedule's, the schedule's brutal. brutal. Well, you're coming off a state championship. Yeah, mm-hmm. and you come off a state championship, and what's the first thing that your public face says? Are uh, we going to keep on going? Get another keep one. Keep on yeah. running. Get, Get another, another one. one. And it's a totally unfair thing to say to a guy coming and getting, yeah. as you said, got decimated. By graduation. I think he brings back like four guys. Yeah. And there's going to be some patience needed in the next couple seasons. They open give, up. They give open them up. two years. Okay, I'll give, I'll give I might give him maybe longer than I may give him three. You know what I mean? I'll be honest and, with and you. I'm, and this is, and I love Aaron Marshall, and, and he has turned out to be as advertised. After a, a kind of a rough first couple years, yep. he, he turned it around like, like a magician the, the last two years. Isaiah helped. But, but I will yeah. say that I think that he had a four year plan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like the plan was so. to was to take uh Zeke and and take them as as far as they could take them and it ended up being a state championship. And I think he in his whole the way that he planned this out was he was gonna then leverage that into what he has Another now. Which, brother, now he's brother got Berman brother right. Yeah. So so, yeah, I mean, for Andy, it'd be nice. It'd be not. I mean, I would have loved to see Aaron stay there and and yeah. build that thing up, but I, I I wasn't necessarily shocked when I heard it. it it's going to be an interesting year with A and T. It'll be something to keep an eye on. They open up the year with Flip Beecher, um, which is going to be an interesting matchup, to say the least, over there. So because remember, there was all those years where they were underachieving. Yes, um, where they had all that talent and then couldn't get over that Final Four bump, and then they went instead of going forward, they went backwards. Yep. Uh, and then Marshall comes in there with Zeke, and they kind of treaded water, and then exploded the last two years. So yeah. mm-hmm. uh, you know, Keith McKenzie does not have um, on one on one hand, he's coming into a program where you're gonna you're gonna have athletes, you're gonna have kids, you're gonna have a excitement that's there because of the state championship. But um, I don't know. For me, it's like for me. I remember Keith McKenzie playing in the NFL with the Green Bay Packers. If you're a kid right now, 16, I don't. T- what I'm saying is, if I was a six, if I was 16 now, and you told me Keith McKenzie was going to coach me, like, that's amazing. But as a 16 year old now, you, you have who, no idea who Keith no McKenzie idea. is. Who's Keith McKenzie? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, that's the what fact that he played in the NFL doesn't mean anything to, t- to these kids. To tell you the truth, I don't remember yeah. Keith yeah. McKenzie playing. He's a linebacker. Yeah. Uh, linebacker played about six years. He was on the Super Bowl, uh, the, the Brett Favre uh, 96 yeah. Super Bowl. Yeah, and I think that's going to be interesting to see how that one goes over there. Ready to talk the kiss of death division, which yep. is what I call it, the red? Oh, I mean, it's the best, uh, you know, Catholic best. League Central and OA Red. Are the, I not call just, this the kiss of death not division. Not just the two best leagues in the state, in my opinion. I mean, these are, you know, two of the best leagues in the country. I'm already mm-hmm. guaranteeing this right now. And put it on air. All five teams in this division are making the playoffs. Calling it on air. Yeah, I, I wouldn't okay. be shocked if Oxford made it in. No. Um, speaking of that, let's start, um, let's talk about Clarkson first. Let's talk Clarkson. I mean, when you look at the Wolves, I mean, like we talked about, this team's going to be as good as the Bowman Twins taken. Right, I agree. Do we know who's quarterback? Either going to be Nick, Alex, Nick Wachensko or Mick Mahaney. Both are going to be juniors this year. Yep. Okay. And after the quarterback transfers out, 
Yeah. You lost your running back to graduation. You lose Cozen and Stevens. Yeah. yeah. You've got to rebuild. I mean, Des Stevens, Des Stevens was a generational playmaker. Yes, he I was. I mean, the type yes. of guy that comes around every 10, yes. 20 years. That's yes. how talented yes. Des. And a lot of times, I don't think they utilized him correctly. Yeah, and you lose Cozen. That's yeah. another loss, too. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you look at Clarkson now, and you say to yourself, Okay, you're going to be young. Your defense, I'm still worried about that defense, honestly. Yes. You know what I mean? Considering that this defense has been just absolutely tortured a couple of times. Um, I, love, I love the Bowman boys, though. I, I, last year, I nicknamed them the Bash Brothers. Again, I, aging myself, when I was growing up, the Bash Brothers were the, the home run hitting tandem of Mark, Mark McGuire and Jose Canseco. Jose Canseco. But last year, when I first laid my eyes on the Bowmans and the way they played, their style, they're so aggressive and so... Um, you know, to smack you in the mouth type of, uh, you know, style on the football field. They just, they scream to me that they're the Bash Brothers now. They bash anything in their way. I've known them since middle school. You know what I mean? I've known them since yeah. middle school, and I knew how good both of them were going to be. Um, but when you look at Clarkston, you know what I mean? Beside the Bowman twins, who can you trust over there? Who yep, can you trust? Right. That's gonna, the big question. You're right. You're going to have to have guys I mean, that yeah. make a name uh, for themselves. I mean, line's going to be yeah. a question mark for me. I mean, like. Yep. Quarterback's a question mark for me. There's a lot of questions that Coach Justin Pintar has coming Again, in here. Get the toolbox out and start rebuilding because and you got program strength, which helps them. They do got program strength, they which do. helps them. So that's an area where I think for Clarkson, I think, and they open up the year with Belleville week one, and I just say, good luck oh, with boy, that. Yeah, at Wayne State, and then you know their um their non conference really is not as strong as you think it is. Besides Eisenhower. I mean, like, Athens and Bloopy Hills are probably the only ones, and then you get in the league play. So, for Clarkston, if there was a team that c- could be a team that I would worry about when it comes to playoffs, it's them right now because I don't because of Baker's sink of schedule. Mm-hmm. So, really, that's what it is with Clarkston. So, let's look at Fear the Veer, Adams. You know what I mean? Anytime Tony Petrito's on the sideline, you, your, your team has a You're, chance to do yeah. something. How is this team finish, project finished last? I don't know. Probably because, again, they got hurt by graduation. They were young last year, though. Yes, they were. Still got their quarterback, Ryland Waters. Yeah. Yeah, Mateo Humbert. Mateo Humbert's yeah. one of the hardest, uh, hardest, toughest running backs. He's going to be a stud this Hardest year. rushing, is. tough as nail. Oh, I guess I can't talk. He's the, one of the hardest rushing uh, ball carriers in Metro Detroit in Oakland County. Um, he's kind of one of those all heart and soul type guys. And that's all well and good. But you got to stop them yep. too. Yes, their defense yeah. concerns me a little bit. Yes. I know Coach McDonald's done a really nice job with that defense over there at Adams. Um, they have a depth issue again, just like they. I mean, they had it the I years talk- that they were going to the state, yep. went to the state final. But Trino said that he's got like depth more this year within the program, which is a good sign for them going forward. And I think that's going to be something to really watch for with Adams. Open up week one, with Romeo. I mean, that's yep. going to be just daunting. And Adams, Adams and Oxford, it's the same thing as we talked about with the bottom of the blue. You can throw them into a hat, pick one out, that'll finish, you know, ahead of the other one. And you look at Adams, I mean, like, I think they're they're going to be a scary team this year. I mean, the Veer, anytime that offense, it scares you. Um, let's talk about, t- about a team that scares me this year, and that is Oxford. Now, all those kids on Oxford, they all know Zach Line played in the NFL. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And that he won a yes. Super Bowl. Yes. And that, you know, he he's the best thing that's happened to that program uh, in so many different ways. And a lot of them have nothing to do with on-the-field football. Right. Mm-hmm. He's just a tremendous person to have back here that he wanted. I mean, I, I don't think I'm telling people they don't know. He literally left the – he retired from the NFL – one week, and he came back and took the job at his yes. alma mater mm-hmm. the next week. I yep. mean, that is that storybook. Yep, it is. And you know, you, you're you're so right, Scott. Is he's done more as much that team off the field as he's done between the sidelines, especially with you know what happened with the shooting and right, yeah, just uh, tragedy. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And when you look at this team, you look at a player like Luke Johnson. Luke Johnson. He, he reminds me a lot of when Line played. He reminds me of Tate Mir. He reminds yeah. me. Of- he ran all up and down the field against Lake Orion last year. Yeah, when he came out to get a drink of water, we were wondering, is he hurt? But he just took a drink of water, came back on, and 
ran for another 70 yards. He's out of that Bud Rowley school of yeah. uh, oh, yes. power rushing. Yes. To me, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this right now. You, between him and Mateo Humbert, I think those are the two best running backs in this yep. division. I mean, yep. Luke Johnson, he is legit. You look at what he brings to the table. He will run you over. And I think, you know, he reminds me a lot. He's got a lot of line. He's got a lot of take. I mean, like, he, he's got a lot. I mean, like, you think about it. You know what I mean? The, he, li- the lines and the tates were like, or the mirrors and the and the lines were like, you know, if, if Bud Rowley and Zach Line went into, uh, you know, a chemistry lab and wanted to come up with, like, the perfect Oxford running backs, they would have created Prescott Line and yeah. Zach Line and yeah. Yeah. Tate yeah. Mirror. Yeah. And, yep. Yep. Yeah. And I think with Oxford, and let's not forget, it's not just Luke. You got a quarterback in there. Hendricks. That, and Jack Hendrickson. Yes. You were impressed with him when you seen him. Very he, impressed. He is, he to me is one of the most underrated players in this division, in this league. Yep. And coming in last year, and, you know, he was a young player last year. And we thought, eh, you know, another new developmental quarterback for Oxford. Reed Glacier Wellington. Yes. And he turned around and had an excellent game against Lake Orion. I remember the Stony Creek game, too, when he went nuts in that one. Yeah. Is Glacier Wellington back in Oxford? I don't know if he is or not. He was a, he was a really fun player. To, he was. He yeah, was a cover. fun player to watch. Yep. But Wellington, no, he played both ways. You no, know, Jack, yeah. he, can no, make no. Him, he can play one way now. Yeah. I mean, because... Zach's done a really nice job building that lineup there, building the depth over there. Yep. He's done a really nice job. And Oxford's returns, I think, 21 starters this year. Yep. That's scary. Yep. And you look at they got – I mean, they got – I mean, the and let's talk their schedule. I mean, my God. At Swinehart week one. Harper Woods week two. That's not even counting the league schedule. Rochester's a tricky game for them at Rochester. Oak Park week eight. Macomb, Dakota, week nine. Yep. Isn't that brutal? Yeah. Welcome to OAA Red. Yep. yep, yep. Yep. Isn't that brutal? And I think I could see them winning maybe four or five games this year. Yeah. With that schedule. And it's not all. I mean, it's just the way the chips fell. Yes, it is. Let's talk West Bloomfield now. I talked to Tyler Keith. I talked to Tyler Keith yesterday here on the podcast. Um, We spoke about the Lakers. He's got worries on the defensive side of the football. And I do too. Yep. You look at West Bloomfield and last on, year on the line. I have, I yeah, I mean, you look at West Bloomfield quarterbacks. Not on the offense, by the way. Not on the offense. Not on the offense. On the defense defense line, is the one you got to be worried about. Yep, and you can go out and score forty-two points, but if you give up forty-five, and that's their problem. They got to get get their defense home. I also think another one, and you talked to me about this last year. Discipline. Discipline, yeah. discipline. Isn't that always been the thing with West Bloomfield? Yes. Like it's when they, been their problem. When they stop shooting themselves Except in the foot is when they start, you know, making the, yeah. the strides. A couple of years under get. Ron Bellamy, he had them playing disciplined football. Those last, those last two years, last yes. two three years, yeah. And it it has been the thorn in their side as long as I've as I've covered watching West Bloomfield play. Is they got it have team discipline. I'm going to tell you the X factor in my opinion. And I, I kind of swung and missed last year when I called uh, that Josh Tate was going to have a breakout season. He He's did, their running back. He didn't. Um, I saw him in the off season in 23 and I, I thought he was going to have a really big year in 23 and he kind of underwhelmed only 300 yards and two touchdowns. This is the year. You know, I think if if he can have the type of year where he's pushing towards a thousand yards, um, that would be a huge X factor in in, in the West Bloomfield offense because they're going to be paying a lot of attention, attention to Cam receiver. Flowers and Elijah Durham. Right, you they know have what two, I mean? You know, yes. maybe the you know the best receiving Wide receiver tandem in the, game. In, in, yeah. in the you know yeah. in the area right now. Cam Flowers is is going to Toledo. Yep, Elijah Durham is is uncommitted. But you're talking about guys that uh, you know both thousand yard receivers, both over ten touchdowns last year. But then they got, you know, they got to figure out what their quarterback situation is. Either Jamal Shakespeare or Bo Jackson. Um, Bo Jackson. I mean, like. I'm sure Bo Jackson, I, again, I, there's so much movement. Yeah, but does he fit so Hilbert's his offense? No, I agree. I'm, what I'm saying is I, there's so much movement. I'm, I'm guessing 
that when Bo Jackson decided to make the jump from Catholic Central, where he'd been a starter for two years, to um, West Bloomfield, I'm guessing he did not think that he'd be sharing the job. Yeah. I mean, Jamal Shakespeare, I've seen he's a freakish athlete. My goodness. I mean, like, you know, I've been high on this man and this young man since he was a freshman. I mean, Jamal Shakespeare's, I mean, like, and they have him possibly, he could play defense too. I mean, that's how, you know, that's how, um, when you look at West Bloomfield. So when I look at the Lakers, discipline is the one I'm concerned about. I mean, when you look at the Lakers, quarterback, they got to get that figured out. Defense, I'm extremely concerned about with that team. Open up the year week one. Picker, against... P- Picker and uh, Edison. Picker's out for a while. He's still bound on a labrum injury because I talked to Hilbert about that in the podcast. So Johnny Edison is a, is, a, is a lockdown corner, but I agree that they're they're thin on defense. They are very thin on defense. And they, that schedule, they open up week one against Chippewa Valley in the Swamp. Then they close out the year with Roseville at Roseville. That is that should be cool. interesting with Chippewa Valley opening their uh, new the, coach, new coach, and you know the Scott Merchant era is done, and yeah. um, we should see what Chippewa Valley will look like. But they still have a, a, a lot of uh, playmakers on. Yes, they do. Is Coach Helbers new this year? He no, he's no, been Hilbert, there. No, it's so third, he's been there. third year. Third year. Yeah, third year as head coach. Yes, yeah. but he's been at After, West Bloomfield a long time. Yeah, though. right. He's been at West. He Bloomfield. was. He played at West Bloomfield. He played. He, and then he, he was. He was a girls' assist, basketball coach for a time there too. He was too. an assistant under Thomas, assistant. and then he was an assistant under, under Bellamy. Bellamy. Yeah. Yep, and then assistant under um, Coach Grice, and then yeah. oh yeah, Grice. Yep, Grice. Yeah. So, and then last but not least, Lake Orion. When you look at the Dragons this year, um, I think they're gonna. Complete what they did. They're going to finish the job that they started last year. That's my opinion. Okay. Okay. I mean, you, like they, you got TR. I mean, even though they got concerns at running back and they got concerns at linebacker. Yeah. TR Hill last year showed me confidence that I'd never yep. seen in a junior quarterback. I agree. Mm-hmm. And now he's going to come in and he is going to grab this offense and they are going to. Been to the will of T.R. Hill. So undervalued. Yes. Mm-hmm. And as a guy that's going into his third year starting, and in his first year, he was he was really good his first year. He just, you know, was working out the kinks and, and figuring out. He was natural. natural. Yeah. And then last, I remember him from youth football. Yeah. He and was then last year, good. he took he took a huge step last year. Um, and in terms of, you know, RPO, there aren't many better Right now mm-hmm. in in Metro Detroit, I, I can't speak to the state right now, but in Metro Detroit, and uh, it just is so dialed in and quiet confidence and can think the game. You know, talking to, to Coach Bell and co- talking to him, he, he he's talked about how the game has slowed down for him, how he can think. You know, two three seconds, two three yeah. snaps ahead. Um, and I I agree with with uh, with Coach. I mean, this is he is somebody that you really should take the time to appreciate because he's yep. one of those guys that maybe like you take for granted. Cause he's just always there. He's always consistent. It's been three years of this and you don't realize that like how special yep. of a guy is because he doesn't necessarily walk in the room. He's not six, three. He doesn't, you know, have the Matt Stafford like arm, but so what? I mean, he gets yep. the job done. And, and you look at the players on that team, Jackie Vasquez back. Yeah. Yep. You look at um. You look at their. I mean, like Ooh, I like Cooper. Is there? They told me Cooper's moving. Jamari Cooper. They're gonna uh move him into the slot. Yep. Jamari Cooper. You remember that West Bluefield game? Yeah, he hit the game when came he out there. of nowhere mm-hmm. and just shone when he when he got his chance. He grabbed it and he shone, mm-hmm. shined. So I think he yep. shone. I went to Eastern. Yeah. <laughs> and then you look at that line. Obviously, you know they got the majority of the line coming back. Um, you look at um. Defense is going to be interesting to see. I mean, the secondary is loaded. Um, you got Trey Pacmara there. Pacmara is such a, a, a secondary. I call him, you know, I like to use the term quarterback of a secondary. Yep. Mm-hmm. When you have a really good exactly. free safety that, like, can patrol the back line of a defense, tell everyone, you know, set the table, direct traffic, tell everyone when they need to go. Yep. It's such a integral, critical part of, a, to me, a great football team is having a great safety. Field yep. general. college, they call it field football, general. or sure. pro. It's so important. And Lake Orion's got the majority of the secondary coming back. The only concern I have with them, obviously, is going to be you lose Billy Roberson last year. Yeah. Um, and then you lose a Caden DeGreffrey and Joey DeBrink on the other side yep. of the defense. So yeah. that's going to be a big hole to fill if you're Lake Orion. DeBrink has, though, kind of, you're, you're hoping, if you're a Lake Orion fan, that you'll have another Joey DeBrink Like, because 
Joey was good as a sophomore and junior, but then as a senior, he was, he was outstanding. outstanding. Yeah. Uh, you're hoping that somebody makes that kind of jump yep. like Joey did. Like. Kid to watch this year is on the basketball ranks, Lake Orion, um, for Lake Orion, Ryan Washington. I yeah. mean, like, you look at this, he's a basketball standout. Very good. He played a lot under last year at wide receiver until he got hurt against Farmington. Yes. So when you look at Ryan Washington, he could be an X factor for this offense yep. this year. Yep. yep. And, and then was, Coach Bell. That was a scary <laughs> night when he went down. Mm-hmm. I yeah. remember that really well because yeah. it happened right in front of my feet. Yeah, that was a scary, scary thing. And you know, we, we were so glad. Yeah, you know, I was so glad to see him the next home game. You know, even on the sidelines. And you know, but. Again, it's player safety. Yes. And these days, these days the players get the best medical attention yep. that is out there. There's I, so many fantastic coaches. Uh, I, I remember what, you know, when I was in, in, back in my day, a kid got a concussion mm-hmm. and he was wobbly. And two <laughs> assistant coaches, you know, this happened during practice. And two assistant coaches put him in the back of their car, took him home, put him on his couch, and walked out. Mm-hmm. And not, when, you know, it's when, not that way it's now. No. Nah, nah. When you look at the schedule now, Lake Orion's got, they open up with Northville. Interesting, Interesting game. game. Interesting game. Mm-hmm. I, I've been talking. Contrast and styles. I've yep. been talking to uh, Ian Locke today whether, you know, ONTV is not going to do it. I'm going to try to see if we can do it. Uh, through the NFHS, that that depends on what Northville has mm-hmm. for their setup. But I'd really like to do that. Should game. be a fun game there yeah. too. And then you look at yeah, they got Farmington's a trap game, and then you look at Celine Week Nine. I mean, oh Celine, Celine is going to be stoked for that game. Yeah, I mean, last year thirty five twenty eight. You should have been at that game, Scott. That was crazy. I mean, like they do lose CJ Carr. I mean, like. But his younger brother's the starting quarterback. Yep. Oh, CJ's younger brother's the starter now. Yep. Tommy, and, yep. Tommy, Carr. Tommy Carr. And then they got a new coach in there, obviously. Yep. Um, brings in a little bit of the Rockford style into him, to what yeah. I heard over at um, Adam with Celine. So it'll be very interesting to see how the 2024 OAs football season goes. Um, so many great. I just want to end by saying we, we, we don't realize how lucky we are here in Oakland County with the no level, question. the caliber of coaches. I mean, obviously players. I mean, you One can, school in Wayne County, technically. Right, in Harper. Right? <laughs> you, 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 you can go back and you can look at all the uh, future Division One college uh, stars and future NFL players that we've put out from Oakland County because there's just a countless amount of them. But sometimes we forget about the guys on the sideline that mentor those guys. Yes. And you think that, like, a county or an area – you're lucky to have one or two Hall of Famers. We we have like a dozen. Like, yeah. It from yeah. from our yeah. from our uh, from our county and and just in the in the ranks, it, you know, going through the ranks of the of Oakland County right now between uh, uh, Chris Bell, Tony uh, Tony Petrito, Brendan Flaherty, Rod Ode, and I know it's uh, Macomb County, ha- Wayne County. I'm uh, sorry, uh, Wayne County. Uh, Jimmy Dewall, Greg Carter. Hurstine and um and Harrington, uh Dan Loria, uh, uh uh Bob Meyer. I mean, I just this is like those are all guys that have made either runs to the state championship or runs to the final four or are in the Hall of Fame. And that's not counting when we go into the Catholic League, uh, and we talk about all those guys. So it's just it, it's it's really special. And mm-hmm. you don't realize it because you're you see it all the time. You know, Do you through, see any final thoughts? Yeah, through Going off what Scott said, for 39 years being around Lake Orion football, and I, I thought about this the other day, the the coaches I've been around, you know, that not only, as you said, work with these young men, develop them, not only as football players, but as really, really fine yep. young men. And I started with Doug Frazier. Yep. You know. Yeah. Not only did it at Lake Orion, did it at Seahome. That's who all my buddies played. Yeah. Mike Berry came in from Ohio or from Indiana and took us to the first two playoff seasons 
that we ever had. The home playoff game in 1990 against Troy Athens was an atmosphere at Dragon Stadium I've never seen, I had never seen before. We had helicopters flying over and everything the 90, else. I think that, I don't know if it was the 90 season or the 80, I think it was the 90 season. I went to, maybe it was 91 or 92. I went to Wisner and I watched when I was a teenager yes. and I watched uh, Seaholm upset a nationally ranked Brother Rice team. Yeah. That was and, insane. And, you know, so Mike Berry, came in and took a very undisciplined team and disciplined them. He told me, he said, he had he had 70 people come out for football. And he said, I don't want 70 people. I want 40. Mm-hmm. And he made early season practice hell on earth. Yeah. <laughs> It'll weed them out. And, he, and that's what <laughs> he them said. Out. He said, I'll weed them out, and I'll have 40 people, and then we'll go to work. Mm-hmm. And when Chris Bell took over, um, he was 30. He was a young guy. He, he was, was 29 young. years I mean, when I, was, when I was in high school, yeah. Chris Bell was coaching the, the, the small school ranks yeah. and doing really good. Yeah. yeah. And Thank then that, yeah. made the he jump. Was, he, was, he was 29 years old. Yeah. We went to a state semifinal. Yep. And I remember that. First year. 98. Yeah. And... He, he has done, I, I can't put into words the job he has done for the Lake Orient, for Lake Orient High School yeah. and the Lake Orient community. I, sp- I spent my childhood year, not childhood, my teenage years um, going up against his father-in-law, Mike Boyd. Mike Boyd. Yeah. That was my, because uh, I played small school sports and yeah. Mike Boyd coached like every team at Waterford, Our Lady of the Lakes. He's Everything. a Hall of Fame basketball coach, yep. yes. Hall of Fame baseball coach. Oh, sorry, Hall of Fame softball coach, Hall of Fame football coach, yep. and Hall of Fame basketball coach. Mm-hmm. Um, I just want, can I make one? Uh, yeah, I want to. I want to yeah, say something do. about Lake Orion, and I think this is kind of both, uh, um, you know, wanting to give them their credit, and I also want it that there are any you know young football players listening right now. I, I've used this example to a lot of different people. Uh, I, I spend a lot of my reporting in the world of recruiting, and you can really get detached from reality when you're talking about the recruiting bubble Mm -hmm. and the offers and the stars and the yada, yada, yada. So I I think back to when I first met Chris Bell, I knew who Chris Bell was, but I never met him until I started covering his teams in the late 2000s. And his first, either the first team or the second team I coached, uh, he has an assistant coach now, Mike, is it Mike Heath? Uh, Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And they had, and Mike had a son named Jeff Jeff Heath. Heath. Yep. Who was a kicker and wide receiver yep. Yep. and yep. safety. Taught yep. him everything he Who, who had yep. literally CC. no, well, this was not a guy that was being recruited at really any level. And he ends up pl- going as a kicker to Saginaw Valley. Defensive back, cornerback. Yep. And yeah, cornerback. The long, long story short, he eventually becomes the captain of the LA Raiders, or the Oakland Raiders. The Dallas Cowboys. The Dallas Cowboys. The Dallas Cowboys. And this is a guy that had no offers, no stars, right. and all he did was keep his head down and, and worry about fundamentals or and, and master the fundamentals and be humble and do your job. And, and this guy is going to have an NFL pension. Yep. And is just, to me, if that's the picture of what – doesn't who cares if nobody's coming to knock on your door? Mm-hmm. Be Jeff Heath. Yep. Yeah, go go you. make the situation no for question. you, and that and that yeah. speaks to to what I'm saying is to bring it all back around. That speaks to the Lake Orion program and the way that mm-hmm. they yep. develop kids. Yep. All right, guys. Um, thank you for guys for joining us this week here on the podcast. Here, um, thank you guys for um for um for you giving your expectations for the previews for heading into yep. the year. Um. Make sure you follow the blog at Saginaw Bay 4050 at blogspot.com for the latest information around the OAA. And also keep keep in touch with everybody here as we head into the um, 2024 season. Best of, best of luck to everybody this year. Take care. God bless. And I will see you all next week. Take care and be back. Thank you very much, guys.